back to the Roman one popular opinions. Today's video is going to be a lot more positive than the next than the last one mostly. Don't mind my hair, it's still a little bit damp from when I washed it, but today's video is a haul of a kind. I'm not going to just show you books, I'm going to show you like a couple other things. Now, a disclaimer before we start. I am entirely against the concept of hauls. Once a year, twice, three times, it's fine. But the rate it happens in the booktube, the rate it happens at in the booktube community is mostly haul on haul, haul on haul, because these people do not read these many books. They just do not, or they buy them rather than wanting to read them, and then their shelves are full, and then they have to get rid of the books. I do not like the concept of hauls for two primary reasons. One, extreme promotion of consumerism, capitalism, everything else. Two, which is a little bit more personal, in the book space, they do not know the books that they're speaking about. Now, I am the type of person, and you will see in this haul, I will give you a reason for why I bought each book. I either already read it, know I'm going to enjoy it, it's by an author I like or something, or I have a very specific reason for buying it. Like, you will not see a book where I'm like, this looked nice or this sounded interesting. And not that that's wrong. You can buy books for any reason that you like. But I don't personally like watching or making videos where people who are buying the books and presenting them and speaking about them don't know anything about them. Like anything about them. And people usually make hauls about books they know nothing about specifically because they don't want to be spoiled. They want to jump in blind, but as such, those videos are extremely boring because you're not recommending me a book, you know nothing about it, so essentially it literally just turns into a video about stuff that you bought, and I find that incredibly repulsive as a concept. That's just my, that's just my personal thing. So you're never seeing hauls from me. I think I did one or two at the beginning when they were popular and I was trying to participate, but I, I just started hating the concept. So what you're going to see today is a very unique haul because it's going to be specifically books that I bought or stuff that I bought for my birthday. So it's going to be like a very, very specific type of haul that I'm probably not going to do again, might do again, but it's a lot of books and I want to tell you why I got them because I do actually have a reason, <laughs> unlike some people. Not naming any names. <laughs> You're going to start off with this stuff that isn't books specifically because I want to show them off or show them to you or whatever. You're gonna see the stack anyway. So I usually keep my tabs in this thing because it's it has like sticky notes and it has the large tabs but I keep the small tabs in there too. I usually carry that around me if I'm gonna annotate something that I'm reading. However I got this box. It was on a discount because like the stuff that's underneath it not all of them are in place which I don't care about really but it's this lovely wooden box and it within it <laughs> we keep my obsessive amount of tabs I always buy these because I'm terrified of running out and I just end up having this box I have like some transparent tabs and stuff these I use like most recently this neutral color I do use the fluorescent ones specifically because I prefer these like I prefer these thin ones to the big ones but I do have like a copy of the big ones in the nice colors for some books and I will show you exactly for which books so this is like the first item that I wanted to show off I finally put all my tabs in one place the next thing is diamond painting diamond painting is something I knew nothing about until I saw it in videos and I thought it would be relaxing this is something that I did <laughs> On my birthday, because as we know, those were like the worst two weeks I've had in years. So I did this in an attempt to calm down. However, <laughs> it's less of a relaxing activity and more of an irritating activity when it comes to sorting the diamonds. Because you get this little small tray where you put the diamonds and then you like transfer them to the <laughs> sticky page. It is irritating. It is irritating beyond compare to do this because they're never on the right side and then you end up having to flip them over and if you have cats my cat knocked that thing over twice the second time I just gave up 
I haven't found <laughs> that small little bowl since, honestly. So we're going to ignore that. If you have cats, maybe don't do diamond painting or close the door <laughs> and lock them out of your room when you do it. Next thing, this is just going to be very random, but this thing, I know this is popular and it's everywhere and it's very old now. However, this thing, fantastic if you like popping the bubbles of bubble wrap. <laughs> We call it differently, so like I was not sure what, which your word to use. But if you like that, this is like the unlimited version. This is actually very fun and it does make a noise. Maybe you can't hear it right now because I think it's a stronger noise when it's on a flat surface. The last thing, now I didn't get this for my birthday, but I'm going to highlight it now and I will let you know why. This. This game. I'm just going to leave it here for a minute this game <laughs> i got for christmas that's all i wanted for christmas <laughs> and i love it i love it to bits and i'm going to tell you why i'm gonna try and like <laughs> let's keep it here so you can just see the <clears throat> see the main characters i wanted a star wars game and this is the clone wars which is my favorite star wars thing it's based on like the pandemic game where i think it's just regular planets they adapted it perfectly this was made by a fan because every aspect of this game has something to do with the Clone Wars. And if you've seen the Clone Wars, you're just going to laugh at so many situations that are very much like the show. First of all, you have all the characters, obviously, and the planets and stuff. But the missions are like episode specific, specific episodes. There are also situations that can occur. There's also this thing about Palpatine, like being on the good side and on the bad side because that's how he is in the Clone Wars. There's also little details that are just such cool Easter eggs if you love Star Wars and specifically that show. But I wanted to highlight this because it's the only game I own that you can play alone. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I know, I'm sorry, I'm just allergies. I know board games are something that people like playing with other people. So do I. Who doesn't? However, there are so many fun games where I'm like, I would love to be able to play this alone because you don't always have company when you're in the mood for playing a game. You can play this thing alone. You can play, according to the rules, you're supposed to play as two Jedi. I usually play as like three or four because it's very difficult with two. I have a blast. <laughs> I genuinely have a blast playing this alone. Because I love the Clone Wars, but no one that I know loves the Clone Wars. So even if they do play with me, it's not really the same thing. I love playing this alone. So if you've ever been looking for a game to play alone and you like Star Wars, get this. If you don't, you can just get the normal Pandemic game, but it's excellent for playing alone. Another side note, it's a really difficult game. Obviously, I'm sure there are strategies online, but that's no fun. That's no fun because the point of this game isn't to win. Specifically because you don't win often. If you know what I mean. Like if you learn the strategies, I feel like it won't be fun anymore. But you lose a lot. <laughs> There's four villains you can play against. Ventress, Grievous, Maul, and Dooku. And they're difficult. Difficult opponents to beat. It's really difficult. Like of all the games I've played, I've won maybe like one fifth of the time. Because it's genuinely difficult. You either overestimate the amount of droids spawning on the planets or you just do a wrong tactic or you do a wrong move and it's just really difficult you can really up the difficulty of this game by like doing more missions having less jedi to play with it's it's a difficult game it lasts a long time it can really occupy you and you can have fun with it and you can play it alone i need to stress how cool it is that there's a board game that's actually fun and difficult and time consuming for you to play alone and especially if you're a nerd about the clone wars like i am this is like the perfect thing as soon as i knew this existed i had to get it again this isn't a birthday gift <laughs> however i wanted to mention it because it's a fantastic thing if you want to play alone i have kept you long enough it is time to talk about the books that i got for my birthday i didn't want this first bit to be long because that's not why we're here however it is still a good recommendation and i needed to get it out there now for my 23rd birthday i went crazy with how much money i spent on books which it may not seem that way but a lot a lot of these books are expensive 
I'm gonna try and tell you how much they cost because I do like transparency, I'll be very honest with you. But I haven't received stuff like since last year. As I said, stuff just wasn't getting to me because my post office was a mess. So I ordered a lot of stuff at once, hoping that it would all get here together. And it did. And it did. <laughs> so I'm very happy I did that. Now, let's just start. This is not a, that exciting. <laughs> it's just Norigami 26. Now, this I was going to buy like half a year ago when it came out. <laughs> but again... The post office was already a mess then and I didn't want to risk not getting it. So we got it now. Volume 27, which is the last one, comes out like in December. So it's going to be a while. But this, again, I'm going to tell you the reason why I bought everything. This was just a sequel that I was going to buy a long time ago, but never got around to it. Now this next book is, again, the reason is Shirley Jackson. I love her. And I've read quite a bit about like from her now I've read three short stories and I've read two of her books so I was like the, these are the most popular short stories I'm just gonna get it I also really love these modern editions because first of all they're extremely floppy and they have a stunning font I'm gonna try and they just have a really 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 pretty font the cover not the best thing I've ever seen but Shirley Jackson I can't wait to read that me and my mother read her kind of together so she's already read a couple stories I've read a couple stories now this next one both of these were bought new, so they were each like 13 euros, give or take. Now this next one was a steal. So basically there's this like used bookshop enterprise in Germany, in Europe, called Momux. Perhaps you've heard about it. <laughs> I think it's actually like Momux.uk, but they are based in Germany and they usually send stuff out of Germany. Anyway, they have a lot of used books cheaply but like very few copies i bought a lot of the robert jordan hardcovers from them because me and my dad would be like there's one copy by momox we have to buy it so this was a steal <laughs> this was a steal and i was eyeing this i was not going to buy it unless it was this edition and right when i was going to like press order on amazon i saw that momox had one copy of this i was overjoyed it is this book, <laughs> Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. I, context for this, watched the show, loved the show actually. I think there's no low fantasy series that I've liked as much as this. Like it stuck with me. I will confess that after I finished the show, I didn't really think I would care to read the book. I was like, I'm, I'm good with the show, but it just stuck with me. I kept thinking about it. And then I was like, okay, I don't like the paperback edition because <laughs> for books this long, the paperbacks are very difficult to read. The font is tiny and the cover had that specific material that leaves smudges like my copy of The Secret History. I hate that material. So I was like, I'm not getting the paperback. I'm going to get the hardcover. Now, there aren't a lot of copies of the hardcover, at least in European markets. So I was on Amazon sitting patiently waiting for Momox to have it because they are usually the ones who have used copies. And they had one, one for my birthday at the low price of eight euros. So this cost me less than manga. This cost me less than like everything else on this list. And it's a hardcover copy of a book that's actually pretty difficult to find in Europe as a hardcover. And that's amazing to me. I've been eyeing this for months. And I was like, I'm not reading it unless I get this copy. And now I'm going to read it. And it's kind of an, a case of where I can't think about anything else. Like it's been eyeing me on the shelf. Now, it looks pretty much like the paperback. It's, I think, pretty normal underneath. Yeah, like it's black. However, it has one thing that I love but no one else does. It has deckle edges. If you can see it, I'm going to try and angle it. There you go. It has deckle edges, which is something I adore. I adore. It just adds charm to a book. It makes it feel like an old, like, library scroll. And I kind of, I kind of really, really like that. Especially with, like, huge, luxurious hardcovers and stuff like that. 
just looks fancy. I don't know what to say. So now I have a copy of this. This was probably the longest story on this list about why I bought something, but I've been eyeing this and I told myself, I told myself this for a lot of the books <laughs> I'm going to talk about, but I was like, if it's fated for me to get this book, I will read it because sometimes books find you <laughs> like East of Eden. That book definitely, definitely found me. So I was like, if I can find it in this edition, and I know it's very difficult to find, and I'm not paying 26 or 30 euros, which is its like normal price when it's new, I'm not paying that. So if it's faded for me to find this cheaply, I will read it. And I did. It was the last one. It's fated. I will be reading this. <laughs> There's a sound I live with cats. <laughs> Next thing we're going to be talk about, talking about is... this i got several volumes i cannot tell you how excited i am that i got several volumes specifically because again these are difficult to find a lot of these books are stuff that's usually difficult to find either they don't deliver to me or they're just difficult to find in europe that's what i mean when i say this difficult to find impossible to find you can tell <laughs> which one's used very hard to find now this one which is new like a new release i think it came out like literally around the time that i ordered it in april the new one not difficult to find obviously the old ones though impossible like if you go on amazon and you you live in europe i need to stress this all the volumes that are like one copy available are pretty much collectible editions because they're like 80 euros 90 euros 120 euros and i was like no one's paying that much so i'm just going to buy them when they're an acceptable price so i basically got these three new because sometimes wordery which is the site where I'm, where i mostly make my orders i go on amazon only to buy used stuff cheaply which is not going to work <laughs> for new releases these three i got off wordery I'm just going to collect them as they come along. When I see there's one, I'm going to order it. So I got number one, number two, and 19. This one though, which is number five, as you can see, that's the one that's like yellowed. It is number five. Yeah, that's the one that's yellowed. It has like the sticker and stuff. That's the one I got used. Now, as I said, it's very difficult to find. So I was happy to find it used from a random bookseller in, in the UK, which is why I had to pay tax, <laughs> income tax for it. But it was, again, like eight-ish euros. And I was really, really thrilled to find it. So I didn't hesitate at all to order it. I think it came from a library too, because it had like the see-through dust jacket on it which i took off because i i don't like that on books and it was dirty anyway so it's definitely yellowed it was either in the sun a lot or someone had it in their basement or it was <laughs> buried in a library but i was very happy to find it now all of these i read <laughs> all of these i read immediately after i bought them this series brings me so much joy i doubt i will ever have all of them I doubt I will ever have all of them because it's just not realistic, but anytime one comes out, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to read it, and if you are wondering if you should read it, even though you've maybe watched the anime, you should. The entirety of it is online, so like you don't have to buy it, <laughs> but you should read it because there's little details and snippets that add so much to stories that you already know. Like There's context that you will be grateful to find out basically. So I always read these when they come out, even though I've already like watched and read the entire thing online. I was extremely happy about that. And if I ever find another, <laughs> another volume, I'm going to be very excited about it. And I just realized that I messed up the edge of it. <laughs> Never mind. Also something to note, since I, I love buying stuff used, I actually prefer buying stuff used because it's already like a little bit beaten up and it has a color and it you can tell that it's been in circulation for a while and I love that because it saves me the trouble of being the one to mess up the copy 
and I love that I just love that so much like Jonathan Strange and Norell even though that's not even like a beat up copy that's why I was so shocked it was that cheap all of these I'm so happy to buy however on Wordery where you don't have shipping which is important if you live outside of major major countries I have to buy them new so I would actually rather have them a little bit beaten up let's keep going there's only a little bit to go and I realize I've been rambling but again I'm not going to do a haul unless I'm going to tell you why I bought that because again I don't want to promote just buying for the hell of it the next two also kind of go together and they're the Miyazaki autobiographies but not really and we'll get into that now this one I've already read actually as you can see by the tabs these are like the colorful tabs that I showed you earlier I've already read this one I'm not going to talk about it this isn't a review but this is not really an autobiography it would be incorrect to say that it's literally someone compiled like interviews speeches that he gave talks in magazines his comments when he received an award or his conversations with someone who came to his studio it's not an autobiography like don't get go into this expecting it to be an autobiography if that makes sense <laughs> and it's also a lot more about animation itself than specific projects at least in the first book he does get into projects but it's more about how they were made rather than the story if that makes sense i was a little disappointed with this because i think what i wanted out of it i didn't get however i don't rate nonfiction because as i already said once i consider nonfiction not books they're just i could have read this online like i could have found these separate interviews online if that makes sense this is just a printed compilation of something that's available online I, I hope I'm making sense when I say this, but I just don't consider this a book. So I'm not rating it and I'm not recommending it like a book. If you're interested in animation or in any of his works, like read it, I guess. <laughs> Although maybe you should temper your expectations about what is going to be. This one I haven't read yet and I'm not going to right now, I think, because they're really long books. They're like 500 pages and I found myself skimming a little bit while I was going through the second one because there's a lot of repeating <laughs> because again curated talks and stuff so he repeats himself a lot because these are mostly his public speeches or his conversations with someone so he usually repeats himself when asked the same question it kind of makes sense this one though i think it's a lot more work specific now it stops at 2008 which is stupid i thought it would stop when he actually left ghibli for the first time so i would be able to like hear what he has to say about arieti <laughs> which is my favorite film but then again, he didn't make it anyway, so it doesn't matter probably. But yeah, this stops at Ponyo and Howl. I think those are the last two films he talks about. So these are more work specific than the other ones were. So I'm going to get into this. For reference, if you're like interested in getting them or something, this one is about Mononoke, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, and little bit about Ponyo because I think that was like the ending so yeah those two books <laughs> I don't regret getting them I don't but I generally don't like nonfiction. like I read it quickly and they are beautiful beautiful like floppy copies they are beautiful and wonderful to read however nonfiction gives me nothing <laughs> it's not a book it's not a book it's not fiction it it gives me nothing so that I already read it and I don't really feel like talking about it like these Next three books are the last ones, obviously. Now, these two are a little bit self-explanatory. There's nothing much I need to say about them, but it's books one and two in How to Train Your Dragon because I have books three to six and I bought books one through six of the audiobooks. So I like want to read and listen to them at the same time. Ch childhood favorites, Crested Cow is just like, the right kind of insane <laughs> i loved her when i was a kid i love going through these very slowly there's not much to say about this and the last one that i got at least like off online the next two i got in person is death comes to pemberley this is unfortunately the tv show tie-in however i love the tv show i wouldn't have got this enough for the tv show i don't care about pd james and i wouldn't have known about this book if not for the tv show 
so I didn't mind this cover. Also, all the other covers were extremely expensive, <laughs> so I didn't mind. I did not mind at all because I love the two of them. I <laughs> absolutely love them. I don't mind having them on the cover. Now this, if you didn't know, if you haven't watched this series or if you don't know anything about it, P.T. James, I think, is a famous crime writer. Her story like about Dalgleish the detective also a phenomenal tv show I would highly recommend it that actor is also in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell I love that actor <laughs> this is a bit of a side tangent anyway this book is a sequel to Pride and Prejudice but if a crime happened <laughs> at Pemberley if you can believe by the title now I don't know if the show is an accurate representation of the book I obviously don't know but I loved it so much that I needed to get the book, kind of, to check if that makes sense. It's been in my cart for months, and I was like, for my birthday, you're gonna get it. I highly recommend the show. I obviously don't know the book, so I, I don't know yet. But I highly recommend the show if you love Pride and Prejudice. It's very much a different vibe than Jane Austen. But I found it phenomenal how P.D. James did... Elizabeth and Darcy in particular they already have a son here and just their dynamic how she maintained that love they have for each other and understanding and just the bond that they have I found so touching and so beautiful like not not a specific spoiler but there's this scene where he tells her like I should have listened to you from the beginning I was wrong N remind me to never not listen to you again it sounds better in the show, but it's just such a beautiful scene because this book actually gives me better soulmate vibes than actual Pride and Prejudice, which is sacrilegious, but specifically because B.D. James was a fan. This is published fan fiction, essentially, and this is just a look into Darcy and Elizabeth's life like later on when they're actually married and have a son and already have an established relationship and sometimes I actually find couples in a relationship far more interesting to examine than the falling in love and getting married bit. I'm one of those people who actually if done well prefer the two couples when they're in a relationship and I really love love this book. There's also mystery there's also excellent actors in the show, by the way, that did kind of help my love for it. But I just think everything was done so well. And as far as published fan fiction goes, I hope this is good. I really do hope this is good because the series was absolutely phenomenal. So if we've gotten anything out of this video, it's that sometimes a good series can really, really get you to read a book. Like they don't have to be good adaptations, but they can really get you to read a book. The last two books I'm not I'm gonna touch on very briefly now I didn't want to buy these books I'm gonna show them to you in a moment because <laughs> in fact I'm gonna show them to you immediately like it's these two it's these two I did not want to buy these books because the character <laughs> the fictional character of Dazai from Bungo is my one of my favorite characters of all time I'm emotionally attached to him and knowing that these books are a basis of his character because that's how the author made him I feel like would alter my reading experience now I don't feel like this actually with all the characters because I've read a lot of the books before Bungo and it it just doesn't work that way but since Daze is actually a main character in the series and a lot of the books focus specifically on his state of mind of on his personality which was based on this specifically this but all of his work I feel like and I know it's depressing like this man killed himself I know it's depressing I feel like my love for the fictional character would make the reading experience more depressing I, th I think that's how I would like to word it if that makes any sense but that's why I didn't want to buy the books. However, on Facebook, I found that a guy was selling these two, like 15 for both. And for reference, both of these cost like 13 or 14 euros each. For So he was selling both of these for 15. And I was like, I think fate is calling to me. <laughs> like I even saw he had some comments. So I was like, just 
write the man tell him if the books are still available you will buy them and he said that they were available and i was like fine the universe itself is forcing you to buy these books like not only is this a steal they're also untouched i feel like he got them as a present and just wanted to get rid of them because these have not been read these have not been read like no way i was like this is a steal <laughs> it's calling to you you need to buy them they're also available even though the post had comments which means he just didn't sell them or whatever happened and i was like okay this is fate he also lived near me so i could just go on foot to get them i was like fine the entire universe seems bent on me having these two books they're beautiful books like if anything <laughs> they have very nice fonts they're very very pretty books am i going to read them yes i read everything that i have mostly mostly not soon though <laughs> not soon though especially this one because i don't know i that i can handle it however there's also obviously the risk that i just might be bored with them but again since i have that emotional connection to what they inspired in my favorite character we'll see how i can handle them like i've been avoiding them like the plague <laughs> but we will see how i will handle them it, again it was fate a lot of the books in this collection like it was fate itself that got me to buy these books on that note <laughs> in that same book on book group on facebook i ordered emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies i don't want to read this <laughs> i don't want to really read this but it feels this is the only book that i will say this for in this video it feels like i would like it maybe there's one book in the universe that's actually popular that i will also enjoy this feels like it could be it and again the woman was selling it at a steal so i got it anyway that is it that is kind of it for the video i hope you enjoyed this haul like version of a video because I just wanted to give myself a break from talking about books because I don't have that many good ones to talk about I forgot I forgot thank god I remembered I also got this book wind in the willows how did I forget about this book because I don't have this physically here it's like in another room buried behind a couple other books I couldn't get it I got specifically the illustrated version this was similar to strange and norel because i got it also used i wasn't gonna be able to afford it otherwise like i'm not paying 30 euros for this but i got this specifically for the illustrations the story is a children's story it's not something that particularly interests me i also don't really like what's the word anthropomorphized animals is that it like when they behave like people i don't like that i don't really like that but the illustrations in this <laughs> I read it by the way I already read it but the illustrations are what got me to buy it because beautiful cottage core wonder cottage core perfection like this is the aesthetic I aspire to live in <laughs> so I was very happy that I got it like it's, it is a bit beat up that's why I got it cheaply but again I didn't get this because of the story I got this specifically for the illustrations and it didn't cost me a lot of money also around like eight euros so i was extremely happy with this i didn't care for the story that much but beautiful a beautiful work of art and i'm very happy that i got it now that actually does bring us to the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it i guess let me know which book in the whole <laughs> was your favorite what you thought of them i guess and if you in general i would love to know if you like watching hauls like i've given you my reasons for why i hate watching and making them but i was going to make this an exception because i rarely get this many books at a time and i really wanted to show them off because after the gloom of the last video i kind of felt like we needed to talk about some good books and some nice things and some positive things to do with my birthday that i do not want to remember frankly ever i never want it mentioned so Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. This is a random clip and this is not an angle that I use. However, I wanted to show you this other thing that I got for my birthday. It's a little Heise, <laughs> Heise Funko Pop with his like Queen K. I love him. I genuinely love him. That's my favorite, controversially favorite version of Kaneki. And like, I love him. He is so cute. Like, look at his little eye. I love him. He also doesn't have like the stool. 
<laughs> the stool, the base of the statue, whatever it's called, that Darth Vader has, which is a pain in the ass to clean. So I'm extremely happy about this because he is so cute. He is adorable and I love him so much. <laughs> so I just wanted to show that off.